welcome to my lesson on how to investigate the change in enzyme activity due to changes in temperature. In the lesson, we will apply our understanding of how temperature changes can affect enzyme function to the practical investigation looking at the effect of temperature on the rate of breakdown of starch by the enzyme amylase. Amylase is found in saliva. It breaks down the complex, long-chain carbohydrate starch into simple sugar maltose. Iodine solution is used to test to see if starch is present. If starch is present, it goes blue-black. If amylase breaks down starch, there will be less and less starch present in solution, and eventually there will be none left and the iodine will stay orange. In this experiment, we'll be setting up five different test tubes of three millilitres of starch suspension. One will be placed into an ice bath to bring the temperature to approximately zero degrees C. One will be kept at room temperature at 20 degrees C and the other three will be put into water baths at 40 degrees C, 60 degrees C and 80 degrees C respectively. We will then place one milliliter of amylase in five different test tubes and place one of these into each of the water baths. All test tubes will be left in their respective water baths for five minutes to allow the temperatures to equilibrate. During this time, dropping tiles will be set up, which have small testing wells in. One drop of iodine solution will be placed in each testing well, ready to check for starch. Once the temperature has equilibrated, reached the surrounding temperature of the water bath, the amylase will be poured into the starch and mixed, and the stop clock will be started. After one minute, a sample of solution will be removed with a pipette and be tested for starch. If the iodine goes blue-black, starch is present, so the solution will be tested again after another minute, and so on until the iodine no longer changes colour, indicating all starch has been broken down by the amylase. The final number of minutes is recorded. First of all, we label our test tubes uh, 0, 20, 40, 60 and 80, which represents the temperature they're going to be put at. Then we're going to put three centimetre cubed of starch into each of these test tubes. We'll then put one centimetre cubed of amylase, which is 1% amylase, into the first test tube, zero, and put it into the water bath. I set up my dropping tile with one drop of iodine in each of the wells. This is going to be testing to see whether the starch has broken down. After one minute, I will take a drop of the solution from the naught degrees and I'll test it in the spotting tile. As you can see by the colour, there is still starch present. Samples will be tested with iodine every minute until there is no further change in colour of the iodine solution. When iodine solution stays orange, there is no starch left. It has all been broken down by the amylase. Zero to ten minutes. Then repeat this process with my 20, 40, 60 and 80 degrees solutions. Degrees will be left at room temperature. 40, 60 and 80 will be put into water baths. 20 took 6 minutes. So we've got this one in uh, 80 degrees. It still says blue black all the way through. Results should be recorded in a table as shown here. The independent variable, what you decided to change, here the temperature, goes in the first column. Note the units go into the column heading, here degree C. Then what you find out, the dependent variable, here the time taken for the starch to be broken down, goes into the next column. Again the units, minutes, goes in the column heading. To draw a graph of the results, you need to calculate the relative rate of reaction by dividing 1 by the time, e.g. for 0 degrees C, divide 1 by the time taken for starch to be broken down, which was 10 minutes. So 1 divided by 10 equals 0 0.10. This is entered into the final column. Pause the lesson and have a go at completing the rest of the rates of reaction. Think about the last one. If the starch was not broken down at all, what do you think the rate was? So here we have the final rates of reaction. At 20 degrees C, 1 divided by 6 gives 0 0.17.
At 40 degrees C, 1 divided by 3 gives 0 0.33. At 60 degrees C, 1 divided by 4 gives 0 0.25. And at 80 degrees C, no starch was broken down. Therefore, there was no rate of reaction and we record 0 0.00. When you do a graph of the rate of reaction, you need to think about St. Paul. S for scale, use as much of the paper as possible. T for title, what is the graph all about? P for plots, nice neat um, crosses with a sharp pencil. Axis is the correct way around, what you chose um, goes across the bottom. So you chose to change the temperature, so temperature goes across the bottom. And what you find out, the dependent variable, goes up the side. Then you need to think about your units, temperature degree C, and rate of reaction 1 over T. And then you need to think about a nice, neat line, a nice smooth line. Line of best fit can either be a straight line or a curved line. Then you need to work out your axes to fit that scale and put in the correct numbers up the y axis and across the x axis. Then you need to plot your um, crosses very carefully to make sure they're as accurate as possible to your rates of reaction. Once you've finished plotting your plots, you will then draw a nice smooth line. And then, of course, don't forget your title at the end to explain what the graph is all about. So now look at why we ended up with these rates of reaction. At low temperatures, such as 0 degrees C, the molecules, in other words, the substrate and the enzymes, have low kinetic energy, which means they move around more slowly, and so, so therefore they are less likely to bump into each other. There's less collisions between the substrate and the enzyme. Therefore, less enzyme substrate complexes are formed and the rate of reaction is low. As temperatures increase, the molecules increase in kinetic energy, so they move around more rapidly and collide more often. Therefore, more enzyme substrate complexes form. The rate of reaction is therefore increased. The rate of reaction approximately doubles for every 10 degrees C rise in temperature. This carries on up to the optimum temperature. At the optimum temperature, this is when the rate of reaction is at its greatest. After the optimum temperature, rate of reaction will start to decrease. If the temperatures rise too much above the optimum temperature, the molecules gain too much energy. This means that the enzymes gain too much energy and the bonds holding them together start to vibrate and they will start to break down. This means the enzyme structure starts to break down because there's nothing there to hold it together. Therefore, the active site will start to break down and that means it can no longer bind to the substrate. So no enzyme substrate complexes can form. Therefore, the reaction can no longer occur and the enzyme is said to be denatured. This is a really important word denatured.